All right, guys, welcome to Approved Perspective, and uh, we're super excited. This is powered by Approved Social, and we're so super thrilled to have Ben from Monarch Kid Co., yeah. and a longtime friend of mine, man. This is super exciting to have you on here. I know, man. It's, we go way back, but I'd like to say, what, like maybe 10 years? Or it's at least 10 or 15 years, because I'm old. I'm 35 these days. I'm uh, 32. We were, I was, what, probably 15 something. We were super funny. Yeah. Yeah. Funny, <laughs> funny story, too. If you recall, we were talking about this earlier, but um, you were there the day that I met my wife. Oh, yeah. And business partner. It, yeah. That was a great time. It was fun, right? Super fun time. I mean, you just, at the same time, like, I remember us always talking about biz, like, doing business stuff, like, because both of us were working for companies. Yes. Yes. I mean, at the same time. But we didn't want to. We, no. We didn't yeah. We, we'd go, we went to the start Mm-mm. weekend thing, and that was a ton of fun. Um, but we always talked about it, and I think when I found out that you actually went all in and did it, I was like, that is, like, super cool. I'm yeah. super happy that somebody did it, but yeah. Thanks, I appreciate that. Same same for you, same for you. So I wanna hear you know, what your strategy is with Amazon, with Shopify, if you're doing that, like kind of what you can share with our audience that might be helpful. A little bit about Approved Social that you might not know yet, but Approved Social is the first collaborative feedback, approval, and publishing engine for digital marketers. So you're talking about anybody who's creating an ad campaign, an organic campaign, Really, any kind of creative process. I know, I think you've been able to play around with it a little bit, maybe. And we also have the ability for businesses like yours to do sort of a buffer style, Hootsuite style thing with that approval process that we've sort of, uh, a patentable approval process that we have up front. So, very excited to share with our audience of digital marketers and internal kind of marketing team leaders what they can do to model after businesses like yours. They may have a product very similar that's listening today. So super excited about that. But tell me a little bit about like what's going on with how you got started with this. Because there's an interesting story behind this. And you got a ton of likes and engagements on your your LinkedIn post, which I thought was super cool, announcing sort of what happened. Can you kind of go go into that for us? Let me go back a little back into like history and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, the way it really started was really it comes across like just like problems, solutions, like that's really how any really business idea comes yeah. about. Um, what happened was that I think it was Thanksgiving two years ago at Lindsay, which is my wife and my partner. Yeah, just like us. That's partner. just like us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, so she's now our, my partner with Modern and she does like marketing and things like that. So that's why like I think Approved Social will benefit us definitely is that she kind of like dabbles in that area. Right. M- m- mainly more than That's what she does, right? Like yeah. well, before, was she working for an agency or was she? So before, so she was in tech pretty much. So the last company she worked for was like GitLab. Um, and then from there, so she had her layoff in February. And then at that point, you know, we were always just talking about uh, leaving your company and doing your own thing. At least that's what her and I would always talk about. And then finally, I was just like, just no, like, don't go back to another yeah. company, whatever. Let's just start your own agency and just like, let's see how it goes. Right. And it's been, I mean, that's honestly what uh, funds us right now. Okay, cool. So I. I think it's a little bit harder for like product management to, unless you do consulting, which I'm technically consulting yes. with Monarch Kid Co. Yeah. On top of other things. Uh-huh. Um, but let's go back really quick. Oh, I'm curious to see. So you're consulting with some other businesses too no, right now? No, no, no. So okay. instead of putting my time in that, I'm basically just doing it for our company. Got it. Okay, gotcha. Like yeah. Way too much like work mentally. Yeah, no. That, our thing, you know. Yeah. So really just focusing on ours. Um, and you hear it from so many different business, it, businesses and business owners. It's like, don't go into a ton of different verticals. Don't go after a ton of big businesses. If you're trying to grow a Monarch Kid Company, like go all in, or you might get distracted by these other things, and you know you sort of get burned out yeah. if it takes longer than you're expecting. That kind of thing. Also quality. What I found is that because we do run our own uh, podcast, and then also with uh, what's the name of it? You want to plug it? I'll, I'll, I didn't choose sure to plug it, but our podcast is called Happy Hustling Podcast. Okay, cool. We're kind of really look into like everyone's journey and entrepreneurship, or if you you know in your yeah. own little. And it's the two of you guys, right? It is the two of us. Should we have had her on the podcast instead of you? You know, she's a little like, wait, why is on the podcast? And I was just like, shh, shh, shh. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Sweet, sweetheart. Uh, we, we all know who's really the, the, the puppet masters behind the scenes oh, with absolutely. us. Yeah, yeah. They, they send us to do these things, but no, not us, too. It's not us, too. Um, they do dress us the same. That was cool. We actually, I mean, it's super, super similar. And, um, 
We did that because we are besties and we share friendship bracelets as well. Um, no, we didn't plan this, but, but let me go back to the yeah, go for it. Quick, so two years ago. So two years ago, one of Lindsay's sisters has her sisters have her family pretty much have like eleven nieces and nephews. So okay, you know, you hear problems, solutions, all that kind of stuff, products. And then one of her sisters was said we should develop something because I'm always talking about wanting to develop something that will prevent things from being thrown or dropped on the ground. Yeah, yeah. And that was because you first. because you throw stuff on the ground a lot. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I guess I kind of do. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you could because of the kids, you saw like the sort of the the thing that happens, yeah, right? I you sit the kid down. To, to eat, and it, even if you're gone for like a split second, uh -huh. something's on the ground. Something's on the ground. Or they've, yeah, like they've thrown a spoon, or they've knocked the bowl, or like whatever, it's gone. And they're just learning gravity too. Yeah. So some of the times it's sure. not even malicious. It's just... No, no, and they're having fun. It's not like they're trying to yeah. attack you or something, but like, you, you know, you, Nick saying, you know, like, I cannot tell you how many times I'm like, where the hell did that spoon go? Yeah. Like, I don't know where it went because it, it went under a chair out. somewhere and it's covered, you know, everywhere. So we have a 12 month old. Well, he's just had his first birthday. So, um, I'm an expert basically at this uh, now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've been doing this You're for a whole year. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, no, no. It's okay. So once that really was said, right. And I've had a bunch of ideas. Of products, but like the thing that I never did was I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna yeah. execute on it. Yeah. So this one for all of a sudden, I think maybe I was having a bad day at work or something like that, and I was just ready to be like, Am I gonna do it or not? So then I just like went all in this market research, talked to parents, did surveys, paid and non paid, um, really just was like, I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. And we kind of did the research into looking into the supplier manufacturer. We mm. a company called Gemba, which is a little bit more expensive, but Lindsay and I were talking the other day to where they do hold your hand quite a bit, especially if you're new. Mm. So you spend more, but you also kind of save more because you're not having the hassle of working with a bad manufacturer. Right. You get quality stuff. So like they pretty much handle everything. Okay. So that okay. Nice. That's cool. So for a business like yours, that's doing that kind of a product. Yeah. Like a physical product that you're mailing out. That's a, you like that company and that sort of style. So I like, I, at least to get into it maybe. Yeah. So what I would recommend, um, is using them to help with their network of manufacturers uh -huh. and cause they can point you to like, is it a better place to manufacture in China, India, Mexico, wherever. Right. And they're like good factories. They won't screw you over. Okay. Right? But I don't think you need to go to them for engineers. So we had to hire a mechanical engineer Got as well as it. an industrial designer. You could probably hire those on like Upwork, Fiverr for okay. cheaper and probably work with them more. Yeah. So they have in-house because they hire out anyways. Right. So with this, you can at least have it's a little bit cheaper, more of a personal relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I would recommend. It's a little bit more of a hand-holding sort of a thing yeah. with it. Okay. So when it comes to designing and all that, if you're already not an engineer, yeah. then you could hire out for that on the platforms that are already out. Got it. Like you said. When it okay. Comes to the manufacturing system. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. All right, and so we have the product here. Do you want to just pull it out and show us real quick what, what it is? Yeah, so I mean, super cool box. It looks like the light, here, let's put it over here. Yeah. Looks like the lighting is a little bit rougher on you than it is on me. Um, it's just, you know, how cool I look. Um, but yeah, Monarch Kid Company, very cool box. And we've actually, we actually tested, uh, like mm -hmm. we're beta testers for you. Yeah. Because we do have a kiddo. And um, so we've well, got the product cool. here. And it looks like I already knocked it out here, but um, you got the product. We've got this clip, and so explain these these pieces for us, because I think sure. people are maybe familiar with a tool, like something like this, but y'all have taken it to like the next level. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything like that for the spoons and the forks and the whatever you draw, you know, pencils or pins or whatever. Yeah. So there's definitely other um, competitors out there, which is I always kind of like shy away from competitors mm -hmm. it just feels like oh there's something to do and i, I can't do it mm -hmm. but i've learned that competitors are good because that means people are spending in that area and yeah for sure um there's that problem it's not a bad thing yeah. to have a competitor in the marketplace I yeah I sometimes so we we designed the packaging to where it's supposed to be i know fairly easy to be taken out right yeah just here, just here, pull that out and this clip is really kind of what makes the difference in yeah the difference um, of other competitors and not. And you got the brand logo on here, and you've got 
sort of this rubbery feel to it so you can actually yeah. clip that. What do you what do you typically clip that onto? Is that like so a table that's or? The thing with this is that you can clip it on anything. Okay. So like my finger is round, right? Yeah. So I can pretty much put this down and because it's a ratchet system, yeah. you can push it tighter and then it'll pretty much hold. Gotcha. You can do it to this mic stand, you can do it to a flat surface. You can pretty much clip it to anywhere that you can clamp it down to. Okay. Which is like really nice. Yeah. Um, originally when I sent you the beta test one, um, you might hold this. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Um, when I sent you the beta test one, we didn't have multiple holes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because we were trying to focus on the MVP of let's just do utensils. Yeah. But this is yeah. where I don't think this works for physical products. And maybe it does, maybe I can be corrected. But when it comes to SaaS, you want to ship out an MVP and then you can iterate. Yeah. These are very expensive to iterate. Yeah, man. So you have yeah. a whole new mold and whatnot. So we basically added more holes here so that way you can attach to bigger different items yeah so we have a video on our on our social where there's like a big teddy bear you can yes two different yeah things. so whereas the one i sent you was mainly for like these uh these attachments mm -hmm. yep so the way this works again i'll just like do a quick demonstration yeah please do i so, wish we had something to put in there but um anyways we're good yeah thing. so it really just like connects to the strap like that and then kind of like in a super easy way, you just connect this part to the clip and then just kind of snuggly put it in there. Yeah. And then I'm just going to use my finger as an example. So you would put it on any surface uh -huh. and then it would pretty much like if you're a little toddler or something, yeah. has it. imagine there's a crayon or utensil or something in there. There's yeah. edges inside. So it's designed to be able to hold pretty much a lot of things. Some things are held better. Than yeah. Others. Even this one has yeah. ridges. So you can have different sizes. That's a little bit smaller. So this one's a little bit smaller for like a smaller. <laughs> yeah. But we have like little spoons and stuff for our kid that's going to be probably fit perfectly in this. Yeah. But if it needed to be smaller, it could it could fit into one of those little rings inside there. Some spoons, and we debated this to like, do we create our own spoon? But the thing is that we don't no. have a bunch of skews of different products that aren't. This, yes, good. You could totally just loop through your own spoon, and then when your toddler throws, it pretty much just hold. Yeah. Hold. Um, so in the SaaS space, there is the ability, like people overbuild their products a lot. It's very, very common, and you have to sort of fight this constant like battle of, Am I building a feature that anybody wants mm -hmm. or is it just the thing that I think is cool or think is the next thing that, that I think people want, right? Yeah. And so you constantly have to look at your product and go, okay, this is all we need. This is what people are asking for. Mm -hmm. And then let's, let's ask people what they want, yeah. right? Let's get the surveys. Let's do these things once we have those customers mm -hmm. and say, how do we improve? What feature do we need to add? And that's way that way we're not developing, spending development hours and money of our of our investors, yeah. you know, trying to go out and build a product that's that's not a good fit for yeah. for anybody. Or or, or, or yeah, it's just a product that you know, or a feature that people are just not going to ever use. It's yeah. just useless. So I think the fact that you're not going out and building and designing a spoon and a fork and a you know all this other shit is like this is perfect. Like yeah. this is what you need to do. Keep it simple. You got the clip. You've got the things. The fact that you have the little additional holes now is yeah. like, that's a big deal. Cause I think at the time it maybe had like three like sizes. Was it was only one. So it was okay. Like one hole because it was designed just to go through. Just for that. But that's what we were told. Yeah. I won't name drop, but like when, you know, we definitely joined a, a small place where. You can name drop if you want. I mean, I, it's I, if, I, okay, don't do it, don't do it, yeah. The, um, just like an later place. Yeah. And so, but it's very SaaS. Like an incubator type of a thing yeah. or something? So okay. It's very like SaaS heavy. I think we were one of the only few like a physical e-commerce. Yeah, players. yeah. And so like, I totally understand, right? Like, you know, coming from SaaS myself, you want to do an MVP, ship right. it out, get feedback, reiterate. But the reality is with this, you can't. Yeah. Unless you want to spend tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. No. So, I mean, I think it's important. I try to be a transparent on how much we spent over the two years. Yeah. It's like 60,000. Okay. Because of like mold. And that was your, you've sunk that in from you guys, right? Or have you, have you taken yeah. investors? No, 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 no. We haven't taken investors. Okay. So yet. you own it. That's good. So that's just been, been us. Um, and yeah, it hasn't been that bad. Mm -hmm. Trips are, are a product that can make money. So. 
I like it. At least, at least the product part, we get. So, so you haven't been traveling for a while. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Well, once you get this up and running, you're going to get some sales. It's going to go well. I have every confidence in this product. It looks cool. Um, if you have kids out there, go buy the thing. It's pretty awesome. You're on Amazon? Yeah. Okay. If you really want to use, um, just because, you know, Preston and I are friends, use MKC15. Okay. Code, cool. 15% off. Fantastic. Look at that. And go check out Approved Social while you're at it. Do that as well. So um, we, we kind of got distracted by the product because I wanted to show people the product early on. I thought it would be cool. People get busy. Maybe they listened for a little bit. We, they saw the product, right? Yeah. But I want to go back to your story because I think it's a really good story for people to connect to because a lot of people are in jobs that they hate. Yeah. They're trying to do multiple businesses right now. Maybe they've got a digital marketing agency on the side. Mm -hmm. They're taking a few clients. Maybe they're servicing them well. Maybe they're not. I, you know, it's it's one of those places where I have been before, and you're doing too many things. You're wearing too many hats, yeah. and at the end of the day, you just really can't serve them all well. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing my digital marketing business and working a full time job, mm -hmm. my digital marketing clients weren't taking as much priority. I was working on them at nine o'clock at night, and yeah. like it's that doesn't communicate, you know, good business to people. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about how you got started leaving the company, like leaving the company, yeah. like you, so you were getting into it two years ago and then I got distracted by the Yeah, product. no, no, so we got into two years ago where we went really full in in the sense of like market research, <laughs> invest, like researching all that good stuff. Um, and then moving forward to, we did that for the past two years working with Gemba. A lot of it was a year was just back and forth with the manufacturer. Um, we had to pivot one sense because like what we talked about, the strap only had that one loop through. So when we were talking to parents, again, like feedback mm -hmm. was like, I'd like to be able to loop this through more things and you can't. So yeah. what I thought about is like, well, we can do what everyone's telling us, <laughs> ship this out, get feedback, recreate. But I really love like Apple and Tesla and a few others that ship out really great products, at least from the beginning, mm -hmm. as far as you can. And then maybe iterate like, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. where we can iterate like the strap and stuff mm -hmm. and i've noted that and i'm like okay so next go around we'll do yeah that. yeah so definitely feedback for that year was like a lot of what we did um and then like product development and then moving forward to 20 well we were we're 2023 here? 2023 yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> approaching 2024 my friend can you believe it god damn it's crazy. Really we have a product now because before it was just like a, a picture and, you know, yeah. types. So tired. It's exciting, dude. It's exciting. Um, and so in February, both my wife and I, so Lindsay, my partner, she, uh, we both worked in tech. She was in marketing. I was a product manager. And so in February, GitLab had their layoffs. And so she was one of them. And then that's when we decided like, okay, like we have this. We're getting ready. We're finishing product development, mm -hmm. and she was also, you know, on the side working with her clients. And the same thing happened. Mm -hmm. with what you said, yeah. you can only dedicate so much time, and the clients that you get aren't so much retainer because you don't want really retainer because you're also working your full time. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Like you're having to switch like the scaling part. Like it's more gigs than it is actually. Mm -hmm. And you're doing things that you're not good at. In my experience, yeah. I was like. I would try to hire a designer, but because I wasn't hiring them full time or often enough, it would take maybe a week for them to get back to me. If I had a client that needed an ad, then I'm going on Canva and creating something that's like okay, but yeah. not great because I'm not a designer, right? I'm a marketer. I can do that stuff, but I can't go create a freaking graphic. Like that's yeah. not what I'm going to do. Exactly. And, um, and, but I was doing that and I bet she was probably doing the same thing. Yeah. It just, it's just not. Not good. You're it's not scalable. So, like in a sense, just really trying to get the client happy, get to kind of get that revenue. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're totally right. It's really, yeah. really hard to do it on the side. Um, but that happened in February of 2023. Okay. And then we made the decision of like, no, just grow your agency, but also learn how to scale it. You know, she has her own like coach now that helps and stuff. Like with when it comes to like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All that. and then we had Monarch um, that was coming along, and then I was recently let out in September, but I was planning on quitting in January. Mm -hmm. This whole video on the Happy Hustling Social yeah, yeah. started from like July, June or July. And I'm glad I made that because I feel like sometimes people are just like, where are you gonna quit in January? Yeah, I know, I know. Video, I was gonna do it. Yeah. And so I made it up till August and then um, I just kept on making the videos every month. Um, but the idea was, I think we both decided where, and the way the tech space is right now, it does suck for a lot of people that 
there's been this layoffs, things like that. But it kind of showed me a little bit of, I'd rather take care of myself and invest in myself mm -hmm. and kind of believe in a company to be like, hey, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Let me give you all my ideas. You know, right. I, I want to use those ideas for my own products and my own services. Yeah. Yeah. So going into full time, that was here in September. And then I thought that having this extra time would be a breeze. And I probably way busier now. Sure. Then, of course. Yeah. That's great because, you know, you're, you're able to go, okay, this is really can be a full time thing. Like I could literally push full time. You know, when we're, when we have, you know, Cone Agency, our digital marketing agency, and then approve social and it goes, okay, Cone Agency better learn, it better run itself because I am at approve social. That's what I do, right? And uh, the, this podcast and the marketing that we do and everything else for, for that is, is my full time job. And I could spend two probably full time jobs if I had it, you know, to be able to do it, right? So, um, getting out of doing one thing that's stopping you from really achieving success in that other thing, I think yeah. is, is a huge deal. So you got laid off yeah, and that's nice. great. <laughs> it's so crazy. You're like, that's great. And I'm like, it's nice. And the reason why it's nice, I just thought about this. It's great because I was thinking about this the other day in January. I don't actually know I would have quit because if you think about it, you're not getting severance. You're not getting, uh, you're not getting like other stuff too. And it's kind of, it's harder. Yeah, you're yeah. Saying, I'm leaving this stability versus if you get pushed out via getting laid off or whatever. I mean, you don't have a that wasn't up to you. You don't have a choice. No, but I yeah. have a choice in not accepting another job. So I recently, because I had been applying, I was planning on leaving the company. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the best vibe. Yeah. Um, were, some people were just like very intense, and I was like, bro, chill. There's really? The yeah, yeah. Um, but I had applied for PayPal. And I had a friend of oh, cool. that referred me. And Elon? Who? Elon was your friend? Elon oh yeah, wait, oh yeah, Elon was my friend. He started. He wanted me to work for X and Twitter. I was like, Ah, uh, you know, uh, you're like, do you have any connections at PayPal? Pa yeah. PayPal still? PayPal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, but recently I got the uh, interview mm -hmm. to schedule it. And I was like, no. So like after you got let let go? We're talking last week. Wow, last look week. at that, people. Yeah, I, Satan. Same. Trying to get him back into business. <laughs> Trying to get, yeah. So I took the discovery call interview and then I was talking to the recruiter, but I told her. Just like, for fun, kind of. Yeah. I mean, like, maybe. Uh, like, so I was just like, I got to do it because yeah. he, you know, put his name on the line and stuff. And then I just said, you know, just like, one of the questions she asked was like, what is your uh, career goals and stuff? And I was like, I mean, <laughs> to be self employed. <laughs> yeah, self employed, working on my own business stuff. Um, but she, I felt like she was going down a script because after that she was like, okay, cool. Next question. I was like, oh, yeah, really care. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely something I want to do because I'm keeping away potential job opportunities, but also when I got pushed out, I mean, I'm not trying to go back. I'm definitely trying to grow uh, our business. But you know, what's really helped me is if I'm being really real is seeing people like you, mm -hmm. people that have taken that leap. It's not even that just that leap. It's more of like, just putting your time and effort into it. Mm -hmm. What approved uh, Cone Agency has been around for five years. Just, yep. like, that's like yep. amazing. It's a big milestone for people because you know the like there's like percentage loss yeah. every year that you're in business. And I I don't remember the stat. Maybe we can pull it up, put it on the screen or something. But like I think every uh, businesses who make it five years plus, it's yeah. like like thirty percent make it that far. Uh -huh. Most of them are out of business by that time. Like uh -huh. you might have some success for a little bit, but then they, they peter out. So thank you. I appreciate it. It's yeah. super fun, but it's also encouraging to hear people like you who are just now getting started, who have exited out of that because just like a mini story, which is interesting is like when we were hanging out, a lot of what we did was up in Austin at startup events. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went out a couple of times, yeah. but you know, uh, we also <laughs> did, you know, networking at night in Austin at sixth street. Um, but we also did stuff like, um, uh, do you remember the robot yeah. protest thing? Uh, yeah. We should talk about that in a little bit. That was really interesting. But, um, you know, that was where we, we hung out. And then after that, we both sort of took jobs. We both is like kind of like a lot of people it Peters out. You don't, you don't have a lot of success. Something that you thought maybe was going to blow up, didn't blow up. And I don't know how many businesses I've tried up to that point, maybe four or five, like at that point, you know, 
And most of our friends stopped, right? Most of our friends took re- regular yeah. jobs. And at that time, if you think about it, like all everybody was gun ho, do our own business, and then you, you're right, that happened. But I honestly feel like going to Austin stuff. Now that I look back, I almost felt, and maybe you felt like this, maybe you don't. It felt like we were playing entrepreneur. Yeah, we were trying just to sort of have fun. Yeah, yeah then we're playing time, house. Yeah, we're playing house. Yeah. Then you go. Back, I agree, actually. Yeah. And then that's an interesting way to put it. Um, we were twenty-something-year-olds. Yeah. Just playing house. Just playing house, but wanting it, but just being like, I don't really want to take the research yeah. and yeah. do all that stuff. Because I had been laid off actually before uh, this one, and I was in, I was 24, so I was really pretty young. But I had been working for this company from like 19 to 24. But that after that, that's when I realized like, oh, you can't really trust companies. Oh. So, yeah, so mm. it's okay. But they'll fire you. They'll turns fire out. You. Yeah. So then um, I started doing like single family real estate, which I did learn a lot. And the thing there was. I didn't take it seriously. Like, I could have reached out to a mentor. Uh-huh. We know people that do single families. Of course. I yeah. definitely reached out to them, but I didn't. What I did instead is play house, go out, yeah. find a wife, yeah. partner, and then, you know. Which you did. You did well. I did well. Yeah. yeah. And then now that I've been laid off this time, the difference is I wake up, I try to take at least one step to try to reach my goal. Mm-hmm. Stay self-employed. At this point right now, it's more like stay self-employed versus like building, which it's yeah. Common. Yeah. Right. You know, so that's cool, man. Well, uh, you're right. That one step every day, I'm sure is making a big difference. Again, it's going to snowball into being in your own business forever. And I think that's the, that's the, the great thing about what you're doing here. So, um, okay. So tell me a little more about, um, sort of where you're at now with the business. Like you've started selling organically. Yeah. Organically. Okay. You, um, I got, I kind of got off track here. Let me go back. I want to go back to the stories because we were talking about this for a second. So we were in Austin, we're having fun. We're doing all this stuff. We go, we have our work jobs, our regular jobs. And then both of us somehow found our way back into this business. You got let go. I got, I got let go. Like that's what kickstarted Cone agency. I was working on client counts while working in my full-time job yeah. they found out that i launched a website for my for my own business they didn't like it so they let me go oh, even wow. though they told me and i and i asked them they encouraged me to do stuff outside of the office they ended up changing their mind can't trust businesses right wow. but it did kickstart me into that world and it's been a struggle i had somebody similar story somebody came to me yeah. Um, a really awesome marketer and he owns his own large business that was bought by a, a news corporation, a uh, large digital marketing agency bought by a news corporation. And he goes, Hey, Preston, you want to work for me? This was like, like a week or two after I got let go and sort of the same thing happened, but I had this, I had to go in my mind. No, because what I'm pursuing is a freedom for myself even though it hasn't really always felt like freedom. Like when you're in business for yourself, it can be a struggle. Like you can get to the point where you're like, I don't have money left. Like I am starting to do this sort of revenue roller coaster thing with my business and I need to sort of to to focus in. So that's where getting focused every day, having those one, two, three, four things that you're doing every day, consistently outreach to people, consistently, you know, pushing it on, groups or whatever that might be where kids are, you know, moms are located, right? Yeah. Like those things are huge for your business and they've yeah. been huge for our business too. So yeah. I totally get that. Very cool. Okay. So I just wanted to recap that. Um, but let's get into something real quick. What do you think are common misconceptions that people have about entrepreneurship and how would you sort of debunk those myths based on you know, your experience so far, right? Like yeah. what, what do you, what do you think? Well, I mean, the first one you kind of mentioned, like the freedom one, like, yes, we do want freedom from not being told what to do and all that. But at the same time, I saw this actually this funny meme where it said, um, I quit my nine to five job. So that way I could work 24 seven. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I pretty mean, true. It, it's true because yeah. a lot of times you work during the day, but with people that are working. Um, so like, for example, uh, because we're working with Amazon, like FBA, we're going to sell through Amazon because everyone decides to show, uh, you know, buy on Amazon. Yeah. And um, a lot of times if I need to reach out to support, I use, I do that type of work during the day. Lindsay works during the day with those clients. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to other work, we don't need people, then we might take a break and then come back and do that on 
Saturday or right. Sunday or maybe late at the evening. Uh-huh. So there's kind of freedom in a sense of there's not somebody telling you their perspective because one of the things in my past job, a lot of times they want you to come up with ideas, yeah. but not really. Because yeah. They're just like, come up with this idea and when you kind of share your idea. They're like, good, we'll put that on the, the list yeah, or whatever. Nice, you know, yeah. And it never happens. So. Yeah. I don't know, to me, freedom is like, you get freedom in a sense of you get to control your way, but at the same time, when it comes to time, mm-hmm. I feel like from what I've seen other older entrepreneurs, that freedom that I think everybody yachting, boating, whatever, like that kind of comes later when you're yeah. already kind of yeah. the businesses. You get to enjoy a little bit of life. Yeah. You know, Bezos was working, you know, 24 7 probably when he started, and now he gets It looks like enjoy. shit, too. And now he looks like great, you know? He's like yeah. built and, you know, yeah, freaking. Kind of huge. What the like richest guy in the world or something or second or something? I don't know what he is. Or he was until he got yeah. divorced. But that's to me like a misconception. I think when you're first starting, a lot of it is like just heads down work. Mm-hmm. Eventually, I mean, I think for you it might be a little bit easier because right now we're trying to grow, 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 and then I feel like you have it a little cleaner scope, and then someone above you that's been doing it longer. Yeah, like even easier. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, and I think it's interesting because, um, you know, people have different sort of goals in life and most people's goal in life is to live in a nice little community with their nice little cookie cutter houses with a cool pool in the neighborhood and some kids around or whatever for the kids to play with. And that's like their dream. And if they can make a nice six figure salary and their wife works too, or, you know, whatever, uh, then they can live a nice life. They can have a decent car too. They can have a nice home payment, right? Like they can, yeah. they can live pretty nice. But there's very few, I think, people like us who are willing to sort of suffer more pain and and like more difficulty potentially than those folks. And I don't mean to put put that down. Like they are happy with what they do, and we yeah. need them to do what they do. Like that's yeah, fantastic. Consumers. Right? Exactly. But people like us are the ones who are actually out there sort of putting a little bit more on the line. And and I don't think people always get that because people sort of think, okay, well, you're an entrepreneur, you're doing well, you've been on your own for a while, like five years in business, that's great. Yeah, there's still up and down times. Think about the economy right now. Like yeah. it's people are pretty sketchy about what they're doing. Well, that impacts my business because people aren't going to want to spend as much money on ads, yeah. right? Or whatever. So there's that side of things. The flip side is people are always like, oh, I want a little bit more safer job. I want to work for a company, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then they get fired. Yeah. They get let go, yeah. right? Whatever happens, the, the economy happens again. And they, it's not, yeah. it's not like a sure thing for them. Uh-huh. And I think that's a, a, just an interesting thing to, to pursue is like, you can either like, if you're waiting to start your business and you're looking, listening to this podcast, you're, you could, be let go anytime, right? Like maybe you should just take the leap and do yeah. what you want to do. What's the worst that can happen? We don't have debtors prison in the U S we don't have debtors. Prison. No, I thought you get just thrown in jail. Again. Yeah. No, you, you just know, go bankrupt. Know. That's it. <laughs> you just go to Mexico or something. Oh, yeah. 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 The borders open. It yeah. just, we're in Texas folks. Yeah. You just walk across yeah, you swim. It's like, Oh, you're going the other way. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. They don't care. Uh, But no, I mean, you're absolutely uh, right. I mean, I don't think a lot of people, they think a job is stability because the paycheck comes in consistently. Yeah. And I've heard this from many people, including my wife, Lindsay, with her clients. I'm pretty sure with yours too. Like, there's no set salary. Like, if you you go into a job, maybe there is, right? But when it comes to the business owner. Yeah, but the idea. Yeah. So it's like, you get paid $100,000, right? They're like, this is what you're getting. And you're like, okay, for the year, I'm getting this. I'm guaranteed this. Yeah. Whereas entrepreneurs, you have... It could be ten thousand one month. It could be six thousand the next month. It could be fifteen thousand the next. Month. Yeah. But like that's that's I feel like the the new norm, and that's the thing I don't think people. It's kind of scary. Yeah. For the most part, if you're doing your business correctly, you're trying to scale it. So it goes, you know, six, ten, twelve, fifteen, and then maybe you might have a down dip. But yeah, you don't see that part as the employer um, employee because you're getting your guarantee. Yeah, exactly. So Until they let you go. And that's because that's what they look at. They go, okay, well, how do I save some money for, you know, last in, first out kind of a situation or whatever that might be, right? And so you start making cuts. With Approved Social, what we we looked at, we were getting a lot of feedback from folks, some some of potential investors and some of the investors that I had conversations with were like, 
hey, what's going to happen if the economy goes crazy bad? Like, what's going to happen if there's, you know, some crazy war that America gets sucked into or whatever, right? Like, and the cool thing about Approved Social and other tools like it, or it actually will let businesses continue to scale using a software that's 49 bucks a month yeah. instead of paying someone $3,000 a month or $5,000, $6,000 a month to do that job as a creative manager, yeah. right? Somebody who's following up on all that shit. So you're increasing your revenue by increasing the lifetime value of your clients. You're, you know, increasing the communication workflow between the two of them. Yeah. And you sort of don't have to have as many people as, as you yeah. need to. So I'm not trying to say that people should go out and fire people and use approved social. I'm just saying that like that was a uh, something that we got feedback on. And when investors heard that, they go, oh, wow. So this business will actually possibly succeed even more during yeah. that time, right? If there is financial crisis yeah. where people do need to let people go, yeah. right? Then, then our business can continue to succeed. Exactly. And I think from a business perspective, you know, you definitely want to save costs where you can. And it just... I mean, labor cost is very expensive. Yeah. So, you know, if, if coming from myself, like if it's my Lindsay and I, we want to work instead of potentially hiring someone else, mm -hmm. I definitely would want to use something like Approved Social because we're starting. We want to keep our costs low, but mm -hmm. for people that are mid or higher, mm -hmm. we always want to keep our costs low so that way we can get, you know, bigger profits. Yeah. It's not even that like bigger profits. There's other ways that, you know, we contribute. Right. Now, have y'all hired anybody to do any like design work or does Lindsay do all that? No, no, so. Like any kind of photography or design work? Uh, so the photography stuff, we kind of bootstrap, bootstrap, you know, we did that yeah. ourselves. And then we did hire a few people like designers, but we don't have, we haven't hired any like full-time people, mm -hmm. just like contract work. Okay. So like, this is what we need. And then once we get that, we kind of recycle it. We use it as much as we can. We squeeze the hell out of that. One. Yeah. And good. From good. There we go on, but. Maybe in the future when we get uh, more sales and stuff. Yeah. So again, we put in 60 on the product and all that stuff and pretty much everything we've done. So we got to make something. Yeah. You know? Well, as awesome. you get busier and busier and you're not able to do all of the, wear all the hats anymore, you and Lindsay, then, you know, you're going to hire somebody to do it, whether it's off Fiverr or some other thing, or yeah. you're going to hire an agency or whatever that looks like. And you can be the approver now, right? Mm -hmm. So you're streamlining that process so that you don't have to be caught up in all of the design iterations. You just get it, you approve it, and it goes live or, or yeah. posts to the channel of your choice. So that's that's uh, something that's cool to see businesses like yours. You're not a marketing agency, mm -hmm. but your big focus is on marketing because you have a product that yeah. you've got to get out there. It's not in stores yet, right? Uh -huh. yeah. So you got to get it out there. You got to get some progress, get some sales. And then from there, be able to get that, yeah, you know, get that in the stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I absolutely agree. Cool, man. Well, so um, let's look at some other questions we got here. We got some questions for you. Um, okay, so here's something interesting. Uh, Meta launches AudioCraft. Meta has released an audio AI tool that allows you to quickly and easily generate high-quality audio and music from text. Simply input some text explaining the audio you need, and audio craft can generate it in moments. So, interesting how AI is, is coming along. Yeah. Are you using any AI in your business right now? I ha we have been. So I think I used it once from like text to image. But uh -huh. It created like I did a, a mom and a baby. And it was <laughs> creepy. It's like, just like extra fingers and yeah, yeah. Is that that? Is it's not good with fingers. It's no. not good with yeah. yeah. But. Given that I'm not in marketing, yeah. one of the ways that I've been using it is I generate content and then I kind of have Lindsay look it over as like a double because again, she has her own agency, she's doing this. So I'm trying to help where I can when it comes to like that written content. Mm -hmm. So then that's where I kind of help her. Um, I'm trying to think of other, I have used it, I used it a little bit in the beginning of like socials and stuff mm -hmm. and I stopped because I ended up having to do more edits than, than not. So, uh, but ChatGPT is what we use a lot. Yeah. Like just writing an email or writing a post or something. Yeah. You can just sort of import. Some. So, um, well, let me talk to you about some AI tools then. Okay. Oh, yeah, that'd be because so there's cool. some cool freaking stuff out there today, people. And like, it's hard to keep up with because there's so many. Yeah. And some of them are basically wrappers for ChatGPT. Uh -huh. They're nothing. They're like, they don't do anything. They just, 
use ChatGPT and maybe they've done some training to sort of teach it how to do certain businesses, right? Or yeah. whatever. Like maybe there's an AI out there that focuses on writing emails for real estate, but it's going to be powered likely by ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of AI tools generally to do that, right? Like most things are coming from ChatGPT, but did you know that ChatGPT now can search online live? Yeah, with Bing, their plugin. It's crazy. You know, there's other plugins too. That's, uh, there's this one called um, Yabble. Mm. And I use it. It's synthetic market research. So if you have an idea, mm. potentially use it. And it can generate for you, like if you were to like survey people, I would definitely ask real people uh -huh. to you an idea to see if that's a good idea, bad idea. Very cool. So yesterday, for fun, I uh, saw this product on Alibaba, um, and it was like, or maybe I saw it on Instagram, and they were advertising. It was this cool little uh, measuring tape that you could roll, right? Like a digital screen, and very cool. And I was like, it's got to be on Alibaba. This is probably coming from China somewhere, right? Like, yeah. so I find it, and it's like three dollars on Alibaba. Uh -huh. And then I go on Amazon, and they're selling it for like twenty bucks. So I grab the link for the Amazon, I paste it into ChatGPT. And I asked it a few things and I said, hey, I want you to operate as if you were a digital marketer who, who's with decades of experience, and, which probably doesn't matter because it haven't been around too many decades. Yeah. Uh, but um, And then I want you to build out a strategy for how to sell this product. And I want you to do, do some research. Tell me, should I even sell? Is this a good product to sell? Yeah. It then went on Amazon, looked at the, the resellers. So there were several, is like, here's the average price. It told me like, you know, and it did say, hey, you should go talk to somebody that really knows how to do this. Yeah. I said, I don't want to do that. Like, yeah. just tell me what I should do. And it built out this entire plan for exactly the steps that I need to take, profit margins, you know, yes, you can get it from Alibaba, but you got to, you know, consider who you're buying it from and is it going to get shipped on time and all yeah. these different considerations. And it's like, if you, I think today, that if you're out there and you want to start a business, if you learn chat GPT and how to ask it questions, yeah. I think you can do that. Like, I think yeah. you could start a business very easily and get it roll rolling and make some money yeah. by literally just asking chat GPT some things. You definitely can for sure. But then also just like everything you were just saying, I was like, it just saves you days of research as you would have normally days. Do, yeah. Versus you're like, you have it now. And then you can continue to mm -hmm. ask it questions to refine. But yeah, no, you're absolutely, Correct. And it might not be perfect, but at least you're getting, you know, 50% of the way there, 60% of the way there. And then by refining the questions that you ask it, you end up getting it there probably 90, 95%. Yeah. You know, so, oh my God, it's crazy, especially, yeah, in this world. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's see, what else do we have here? Another tool that we've been using pretty, pretty uh, consistently. Well, I asked, I asked my, each one of my employees at my agency, I said, hey, I want you to present to us tools that you like and that you're using for our business. Like yeah. I started seeing people's emails level up. Like I started seeing like our communication with our clients and posts that we were making for clients and ads and emails and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just started getting a little bit better and better and better. And I was like, yeah. okay, people are using AI. I love it. I don't give a shit. Like yeah. use AI because if you don't, everybody in our business is going to be gone, right? Like yeah. they're going to replace digital marketers uh, at some point. Approvals will never be replaced. No, That's yeah. why we're excited about approved social being able to like outlive the AI sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but so I asked them and one of them came and they presented and at the end they were like, the deck was created by AI. The images were created by AI. Uh -huh. The content that I use was created by AI. Like everything in their presentation that I asked yeah. them to do was created by AI. So instead of them going out and spending hours and hours figuring out the tools or whatever, yeah. they went to ChatGPT and they said, here are the tools that I use. Oh, and could you add any other tools that yeah. you think of that uh -huh. you know? And then they took that content, put it into this AI proposal document, uh -huh. or not proposal, but like, uh, like presentation, yeah. and then presented it to the team. I had no idea, right? Like the amount of tools and resources out there are astonishing and it moves almost too quickly because it's hard to keep up with. But, um, a business like yours, I think if they can learn to leverage AI in creating these posts, you don't necessarily need to go out and hire a copywriter yeah. or a designer or an agency to do some of that stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. 
might be able to do that all yourself. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's true. And then I think for like copywriters that are like, well, well, I have like a job or something, but they would, because I mean, I have to scale too. I'm not going to be having to use AI right. to write copy. I'm going to still hire out and they can use it. I don't care. Sure. Because I just want to engage in copy. So, but, but, yeah. but your expectations are going to be different, I think, because I don't yeah. think you're going to be like, Hey, you know, write me a blog, you know, blog post every week or whatever. Yeah. It's going to be like, why didn't I get 30 blog posts this week or, yeah. or tomorrow? Yeah. Because if, if some if a copywriter is good, they need to learn how to use AI to write those things more quickly. They can go in and edit it and do the stuff that they want to yeah. fix it, mm -hmm. but they need to do that, yeah. you know, and be able to, I think that's going to be a big game changer for folks. So they're not going to get it. And it's yeah. going to, all of a sudden they're going to go, why are people not happy? The fact that I'm producing all this content in a week. Mm -hmm. Well, cause they want it tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and you better get used to, you better yeah. get used to That's that. True. So very cool. Um, I want to talk to you about like where you're at with your business, where are you listed? Like plug it a little bit. Tell us where, where can people go buy it? What yeah. can they do with this thing? So right now, um, Shopify is open. So we have our Shopify shop open, which is monarchkidco.com. And so we fulfill those orders ourselves right now and until we get a little bit bigger. We are going to be selling on Amazon as well. We're having a shipment this week actually getting sent to Amazon. So that should be ready for uh, the holidays. However, we're only sending, I think it's 200 of each color. So we have three colors. So it's 600. I was home. Mm -hmm. six, 600 uh, <laughs> clips in Amazon. So if you want to buy them, make sure um, you get them from there because but can they go directly to your store? Would you it be, would, would you, okay, would it be better for them to go directly to your store? Um, yeah, I mean, when it comes to like profit margin stuff, if you want to support local business, Shopify. So go to their store, yeah. people. Amazon's great for, for setting it up. Uh, and maybe we can, I'd love to get your feedback on that real quick before we jump off. But, um, but it has a lot of costs. And yeah. so if you are somebody who's going to buy a product that you saw online and it looks like it's from a small startup or mom and pop, do your best to don't go to Amazon. Don't yeah. go buy it from Amazon. Go buy it from the company directly yeah. because you're going to give them more money, more profit. And if you believe in that product and you think it's a good product, yeah. let them develop it further. Let them put that money back into the product, right? So, yeah, no, so www. www.monarchkidco. We got to add the www. Yeah, www. I feel old when I say that. I did that one time on a, in a meeting in a call and the guy really like, it was like ribbed me for it. And he was like, really? You had to say WWW? I was like, sorry, dude, I'm old. I forgot. Right. So, uh, sure. monarchkidco.com. Monarchkidco.com. Yep. Monarchkidco.com. And, um, so you buy one, it comes in a box like this. Yeah. Um, it looks really great. It has some instructions. Um, it comes with two spoon connector things. Yeah, Plus attach it to whatever else you want. Okay. Uh, don't forget to use the code too. So like MK what's the code? 15. MKC15. Yeah, MKC15 for 15%. Approved Social gets credit for that. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't know. But <laughs> we'll set that up in the future. In the next batch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And uh, okay, so before we go, real quick, because there is a difference there, yeah. just tell us the price point difference. So like if you could summarize all of the things, there's all these fees. I know like they have holding fees and they have shipping fees and they have fees for products that are over $20 and fees for products that are under $20. Yeah. But just profit margin. If you can share that with us, yeah, if you don't mind. So, um, what's profit margin for Amazon, which I did find out if you're brand registered by Amazon, which means you have to have a trademark and stuff, which we got mm, so wow. it lowers our referral fee that they have from 15%. To five percent. So that's cool. a big deal. It is a huge deal. So if it's you're deal. actually, if you're not just selling stuff on Amazon, then and you actually have your own brand, definitely could try to get your um, what is it called? Like that? Sorry, it's called brand registry with Amazon. Uh, it's super easy. There's tons of videos on YouTube that okay. you can find. Super important because fifteen percent to five percent. That's ten percent. It's a big deal. Yeah. So it was a huge deal. So, but I even think with even that, just yeah, because of like all the fees. You should make a video on YouTube about that, about how people can do that, because that's a big one. I bet, yeah. I bet you could get some good SEO and just like some good exposure, or maybe you do a podcast on like, yeah, like we had to invest in getting this thing done, but when we did it, here's the benefits and you know the yeah. steps. That's steps. true. I definitely can share that part of the journey because that was really nice. I found out yesterday. I was like, oh wow, fifteen to five percent. That's pretty good, but it's still expensive because you know to store it there. That's why we're only sending six hundred. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have it sit there. It's especially during the months of October to February. 
it's two dollars and some like per cubic foot yeah first you know so it's it's expensive um and then so you have the referral fee you have to ship it to ups mm. from there they send it to fulfillment centers and then there's fees for that there's a lot of fees yeah of fees. yeah but when it comes to profit margins i think we're hovering around 50 percent, if not maybe slightly lower on amazon amazon on amazon it's good with shopify it's a little bit higher i think it's more of like 60 mm -hmm. that's because the only fee we have is i think it's shopify's like point something yeah yeah and then they have a really great um, shopify has a really great like discount code or discount that they get from shipping labels uh-huh that's pretty much it okay that's not bad yeah, okay so. good i was thinking it was going to be a little bit uh lower on amazon side but that's not that's not terrible if you're well, saying i don't think we so the only shipping label that we get is that we have to send the product to Amazon and I don't think we have to pay any shipping when they do all the stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's also because we're part of like the FBA, the fulfillment by Amazon. Mm -hmm. You can fulfill it yourself, but then, but that's a, you don't get prime or any of that stuff that people want. So, right. No, yeah, it's almost I prime. honestly, I don't know that I buy stuff. that's not prime. Almost never. Yeah, I don't either. It feels kind of scammy. I know. I know. It's like, wait, I have to wait a week yeah, like, to I get this thing. Yeah, like, I want it tomorrow. Yeah. In fact, um, I ordered some lights that I meant to have been ordering for the last few days for this room. So give us a little more light, but uh -huh. they're coming in tonight at 10 p.m. I, I know, was like, ridiculous. It's inconvenient, right? this is not cool. <laughs> so, uh, well, Ben, thank you for coming. Ben from Monarch Kid Co. Excited to see your journey. Excited to see what happens next. We'll, we'll probably have you on the, the podcast again soon. Yeah. Um, like cheers. Cheers to the Stanleys. Stanleys. Don't go get another job. Oh, you got okay. this. <laughs> you see, um, back like, hey, we'll offer you this much. But honestly, like, there's really no, what are they going to offer me? Like 150, 175? That's yeah. Still not, I'm not saying that that's not. I mean, it's good money, but you know. Yeah, long term. Like, stay focused on your goal. If your goal is the freedom, if your goal is to have that, then like, do that. My, my, my main goal is next summer for us during the day, like it could be a Tuesday, we just like hang out at the pool. Yeah. So that's that's my goal. I think you could do that. Yeah. Especially with a product like this. Yeah. Thanks, man. Anything else you want to plug real quick? Um, no, make sure to just to follow our you know Happy Hustling podcast where we're going to be talking about different people's journeys. Right now it's just ours, but I mean, I'd love yeah. to press him to hear his journey because it's, again, what kind of helps spark mine and Lindsay's like, let's just not go get another job. And then we have our Monarch Kid, Clo uh, Kid Co. clip. Yeah. And uh, make sure to just get one. Very cool. Very cool. And the Approved Perspective is sponsored by Approved Social. Please check it out. Um, Approved Social is the first collaborative feedback publishing and approval tool for digital marketers where we literally have the ability for you to see what an ad would look like in any placement that you want. Same with uh, social. So if you're selling a product that is for uh, a younger audience like this, and you want to run an ad on Instagram, you're going to see what it looks like on the reels. You can send that to your client for approvals. You can send that to your internal stakeholders for their markups and edits, and you can get your campaigns live faster. In fact, Ben, this is an interesting stat that we've done. We did a case study on this. Um, uh, one of the clients that used Approve Social was actually able to reduce the number of emails that they sent per campaign by 40. Wow. So rather than having this back and forth communication with their clients yeah. and taking weeks to do via email, they're able to use Approve Social, reduce the number of emails that they have to write and, and communicate back and forth yeah. and get their campaigns live yeah. more quickly. And, and another case study that we did, people... <laughs> <laughs> is that um, one of the agencies that used this approved social for just one of their clients, they liked it so much that they hired them for another website. So they did one website where they did all their landing pages, used approved social for the feedback and the collaboration. And then they went out and hired them another, again, for another website that they had in their portfolio. So they made another like 10 G's on a client that was only a five or 10 G client. Yeah. So it's, it's massive, right? Yeah. So please get out there, try Approve Social. Um, if you're interested, send us a DM. Uh, and if you have a business that, that uh, is approved, we'll give you a free 60-day trial because we want people to use it. We believe in it enough that you're going to use it for a long time. And we want to give you that opportunity to really embed it in your team. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Ben, thanks for coming out, man. Yeah, thanks, Preston. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah.